I've been in the mental health field for over 25 years. I started out in group homes for adolescents and then group homes for small children. <laughs> and I kept moving up. I went from a line staff to therapist and eventually was even a director of a group of group homes. Um, from there, I moved into community behavioral health services um, and eventually into private practice. Throughout all these years of experience, I have found myself repeating some of the same things over and over and over again. And I remember probably about seven or eight years ago, <laughs> I joked around with my clients that I'm going to write a book and I'm going to put all these things that I keep saying <laughs> in one spot <laughs> so that I can stop saying them over and over and over again and people can just go and find them and figure it out. Um, <laughs> I joked about it. I've written one of the books that I intend to. Not necessarily that one, but it's still something that I have repeated a lot. I figured if there's a need for multiple different people of different ages, ethnicities, socioeconomic backgrounds, geographic location. If there are people of all these different statistical standings in need of hearing the same thing, then why not put it in a format where they all can hear it at the same time. I know everyone isn't going to tune into this. But by making it available, everyone could. And everyone who needs to hear some of those same things over and over and over again they have an opportunity to. Whether they hear it on the first broadcast of the episode or if they download it a year later, I'm still doing something to make it accessible to them. One of the things I've said so often to clients that I've actually made up a phrase that over time has come to rhyme. Um, it, it wasn't my intention to come up with a little catchy phrase or anything like that. But what it is, what other people say and do is always a reflection of them, not you. I've said that so many different times that I've had clients tell me they were going to put it on a pillow so they'll remember it every time they looked at the pillow, that they were going to put it on a shirt, they're going to put it on a hat, like whatever they could possibly do to remind themselves that the behavior someone else chooses to engage in has very little to do with them other than being present. <laughs> How people choose to behave is a reflection of who they already are inside. And regardless of what you do, that person still has a choice and how they want to react to it. The silly example I always give my clients is 
If you were to go to a store, any store of your choosing, and randomly slap five people in the face, there's a likelihood you'll get five different responses. Someone may immediately hit you back. Somebody may stand there and scream or yell, call for help. Somebody may run away. Somebody may assume that you are having some sort of mental breakdown and you're in need of help and they just want to help you. Somebody else could advocate for another person to come and hit you. <laughs> you engage in the exact same behavior of slapping a stranger in the face. But how that person responds to your behavior is a reflection of who they already are and has nothing to do with your action. I know there are so many people who need to hear just that one statement. And I find myself repeating so many more. All I want to do is give people the help, the validation, the skills, the know-how to create the life they want and deserve for themselves. And if you'd like to support me in doing this, it is definitely welcomed but it's not a must in order to access the podcast, to access whatever help you can derive from it. 